Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Thursday. This Thursday's uh, mentoring hour. Today's Thursday, August twelfth. I have also just turned on the recording so we could uh, um, record this uh, session, the interactions we have, and also make it available to um, people who would view it um, at other times, uh, whether in on Google Classroom or in the e-learning portal. So good morning, everyone. Welcome again. And um, we'll just get started with a word of prayer. Can I uh, request uh, somebody just to please just lead us in a prayer and uh, commit ourselves to the Lord as we talk and discuss. Prabhaka, would you please like to pray? Sure, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you. Uh, we glorify your holy name. We come to your throne of praise. Father, uh, we are very grateful for you, for, uh, to you for this wonderful opportunity, uh, for this mentoring session today. Lord, uh, lead us uh, in your holy grace. Lord, give us the wisdom to understand your holy verses and whatever the questions has been asked and the answers has been deliver lord be with us and let us understand uh, the proximity of it and uh, let us understand what you have uh, in build for us lord lead us and uh, bless each and everyone with your heavenly uh, grace and wisdom and knowledge and uh, lord thank you for everything and i i, I dedicate everyone uh, to your throne of grace and i Ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Prabhakar. All right. So uh, we will get started. It's an open time of uh, interaction. So you know everyone is free to uh, participate, to ask questions, to share your thoughts. Uh, everyone is welcome to do that. Uh, I noticed um, one question that was on the um, um, uh, stream uh, in the main Audi. Uh, Manu had shared that question uh, um, and uh, I was trying to understand it. So we'll just start off with that and then uh, you know we could take up other questions as well. Uh, anything that was unfinished from last week as well, uh, we could take it up. Uh, I'll just uh, share that question and uh, respond to that. And Jean, would you like to lead today's um, uh, discussion? I mean, I will start off and hand it off to you if it's okay with you. Yeah, sure, um, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll just uh, respond to Manu's thing, a uh, question, and then I'll hand it off to you. All right. So, Manu's question on the stream there was, um, and I hope I understood it correctly. But the question says, uh, if there's somebody uh, in the congregation, so you have a pastor and a congregation member situation, where uh, there's somebody in the congregation who prayers and who says uh, you know they they receive a word from the lord or somebody from the congregation says that they feel led to pray about something uh, should the pastor go with that uh, is that your question mano did i understand your question correctly okay i'm not uh... Okay, I, I don't know. Yes, sir. Actually, my question is, sir, uh, if uh, uh, pastor has a vision and the pastor is saying that uh, church, we will do this and this. So after that, uh, in church believer, uh, that is saying, no, when I will not do this, because when I get from something from God, then I will do. Then what to do? Oh, I see. okay. I understand now. Maybe I understand better now. So you're saying the pastor who's leading the congregation says, "This is our vision. We're going. Uh, we're going to do this." Whereas somebody in the congregation says, "No. Uh, uh, only if um, I pray and uh, I, I, you know, I feel led or some. Only then I will join." Is that that the scenario? Yes. 
Okay. So, uh, okay. Yeah. And I, I think that is perfectly fine. Right. So what we should do is we, uh, you know, def we, we do not control people. We do not, um, you know, in any way control or manipulate, manipulate people. Uh, we want people to follow the vision only as they feel released. Uh, they feel free to do that. Uh, some of the scriptures that really, uh, you know, help me in this direction, I'll just mention two, Second Corinthians um, chapter 1. And uh, Second Corinthians chapter one and verse twenty-four. Somebody could type that uh, in the in the chat. Second Corinthians one twenty-four, and uh, also uh, uh, I will look at uh, yeah, the other scripture is in Second Corinthians chapter. Uh, um, and then. Okay. Let me read this first and I'll find the other. Second Corinthians 1.24, Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he says, Not that we have dominion over your faith, but our fellow workers for your joy, for by faith you stand. Right? So notice Paul is very clear. He says, we do not have dominion over your faith. That means we do not control your faith. Right? But what do we do? We are working for your joy. That means, you know, to encourage you. Uh, and so on. So as a leader, we do not have dominion over people's faith. We cannot control them. We cannot dictate what they have to do. Right? And there are several other scriptures on this. I'll just mention the other one from uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and uh, verse uh, 10. This is another uh, verse that uh, I like. And that, that, I mean, I can think of two more, but Secret 13, 10, Paul again writing to the Corinthians, he says, um, and the, you know, he says, he says, I should, lest I should use sharpness according to, to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. So what he's saying is, you know, God has given me authority, right? God has given us uh, spiritual authority, but we use it to edify, not to destroy people, right? So we have to exercise authority, but it's always for edification, not for destruction. Another uh, scripture that would fit into a scenario like this is in First Peter chapter five, um, where Paul is writing to the elders. He's he is speaking to the uh, spiritual leaders, you know, and he says, uh, First Peter five, and I'll just read verse three. First Peter chapter five, verse three says. We are not lords over, not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. That means we don't lead by force. We don't lead by, uh, you know, in the modern language, you would say dictatorship. We don't lead that like that. We lead by example. That means. I set the example. I must do it first so that others can follow. So uh, that's what that's how I would respond to uh, that question. That um, uh, uh, you know uh, that is perfectly fine. People must be given the freedom to make their choice uh, whether or not uh, they want to follow the vision or, or of the of the leadership. And at some point, if somebody in the congregation feels they have a different vision, they are free to move in the direction they uh, they wish to go. But we can't force them to follow the vision of uh, the leader. Yeah. Okay, I hope that helps, uh, Manu. Okay, I'm gonna hand yes. this off. Thank you. Welcome. I'm gonna hand this off to Jean. Jean's uh, one of our faculty and uh, also part of our pastoral team. Uh, she will just host this meeting, but everyone you know, is welcome to participate. Thank you, Jean. Your mic, I think, Jean, your mic. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Yeah, so um, welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, we could post in our questions or uh, even unmute uh, and, and ask. I think there are, um, there is another question that's come up on the chat um, by Charles. Uh, so he's, he's asked for more insight on Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11. To 14 Ephesians chapter 1 verses 11 to 14. Uh, Charles, could I well, can I ask you to read that out for us, please? Uh, 
Charles? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 to 14. Okay, maybe I'll I'll read it out and I can open this up. Um, so Ephesians 1, 11 to 14. Uh, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Okay, um, I'd, I'd like to open this up um, uh, to, to any of the pastors to um, maybe share your thoughts uh, also. Anybody? Okay, maybe I'll, I'll probably um, uh, give in a couple of insights uh, and uh, the way that uh, uh, I've understood it and then uh, I'm sure the other pastors could definitely pitch it. So um, I think in, in this scripture, it, it specifically talks of how uh, the Lord has chosen us. He has predestined us um, from the beginning to receive an inheritance from God. So. It, it's always been in the heart of God that um, his creation has fellowship and a relationship with him. And so those who do put their trust in Christ um, have received an inheritance. Those and, and God chose those from the beginning. He's predestined us from the beginning uh, on, on, on our relationship with Christ. And when we do put our uh, trust in him, um, and when we believe in him, we have been identified by, um, we have been given the promise of the Holy, Holy Spirit. And that, that, is, that is, so whoever puts uh, his trust in the Lord Jesus does have the, the um, guarantee of the Holy Spirit. And, and we are, um, uh, we have his presence in us so so the so so the this wisdom and the understanding that we have uh, we grow in the knowledge of god as a result of of uh, the the presence of the holy spirit in us so the spirit is the lord's guarantee that he will give us all that we need or all that he has promised and the spirit is the guarantee that we are purchased as his people and um so um, I, I don't know if I've, I've really kept it, maybe not too prepared on answering it right away, but uh, a couple of things is that he has chosen us. We have been identified as his own by his spirit, uh, which he did promise long ago. And this spirit is a guarantee to us um, in everything that he has promised and purchased for us, his people. So this is in short what, uh, you know, I, I'd like to open it up to the, other pastors to um, to add in. Yeah, th <clears throat> thank you, Jean. Uh, what I just want to uh, share from uh, you know some just to add, <clears throat> add to what Jean has shared, right? So uh, in this passage, uh, um, Paul is talking about our our life in Christ. Right, saying in Him, right? So if you look at it at, at three times, he's saying in Him in him in whom so this is what we have in christ um so verse 11 is saying we have been predestined um and then verse 13 and 14 13 is talking about something we have right now which god has given to us and verse 14 is then saying there's something coming up in the future so verse 13 he says after you've believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So that's something we have right now. That seal is really God's mark of ownership, right? So he's saying, look, in Christ, you've been marked by God. 
you have God's mark of ownership on your life. You have you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. But the seal, which is God's mark of ownership, also serves another purpose. He says that in verse 14, which is the guarantee. Uh, the King, old King James would say the earnest or the modern usage would say down payment. So the seal, which is the mark of the Holy Spirit, is a down payment of something more to come. And what is that? He says, the full redemption of the purchased possession. So right now, we are God's purchased possession. But God has sealed us, marked us as his own. So that's, in, that's saying, look, I got, your, I got my stamp on you. You are my purchased possession. But the seal, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, is a guarantee of something more to come, which is the complete redemption. So there is a part of redemption we enjoy right now, and there's a part of redemption which is going to come in the future. And what would that be? And there's a lot that is out there in the future. Uh, our bodies, you know, first, you know, we think of our bodies will be glorified. Uh, this mortal will put on immortality. There will be, you know, none of the problems we have to struggle with here on earth. And then there's so much more. You know, we're going to reign with him. Uh, we're going to be part of his eternal kingdom, and so on. You know, so that's all in the future. We enjoy some of these things right now. I hope that helps, Charles. And if you have any follow-up questions or more specifics, you can uh, direct that to Gene, please. Uh, right, Charles. Uh, is there is there any follow up question on that? Um, I'd also like to um, uh, uh, you know just open up. There there is a sermon series on the Book of Ephesians um, uh, in the <clears throat> in the website. So um, uh, it it the, the the sermon series does does have the entire Book of Ephesians that. Uh, um, we dealt with so uh, you know to for an in-depth in-depth study uh, that's uh, something that uh, you could look into just study the um, book of I just I'm just putting up the uh, website sorry Uh, the book of Ephesians is uh, is there uh, at the sermon. So for an in-depth study, um, you could um, we could just look into the messages that are notes as well there that could actually you you could learn uh, through. Um, okay, I think Charles's uh, mic there's a problem. Um, that's fine. right. Okay, uh, there's a question from Subhajit. It says, in which conditions should a believer lead the church he is attending? since coming to the Lord. Okay, uh, I think I'll just bring in a couple of points and, uh, um, yeah, and, and leave that open for, for the discussion. Um, I think one of the, uh, uh, maybe I think I'd give you a, just a just a first start off with a personal um, uh, testimony in um, uh, the, the church that we belonged to before we did come here was um, the tradition church. And uh, uh, that's where I did get to know the Lord, uh, serve the Lord, uh, you know, grew up in my faith. Uh, but however, the, I, I, there were some of the doctrines in the church that some of the doc doctrines that were not uh, in line with scripture. And uh, that was something that we, we really um, questioned at the point of time that we were in our earlier community. And uh, uh, when seeking to find a church that, uh, that spoke and that believed and that uh, encouraged its members to live it through that doctrine. So I think um, the, the biggest thing for us uh, was uh, now it wasn't that we were going through didn't acknowledge the work of the Holy Spirit, but not in its entirety and not in the power that is spoken of in the word. So 
uh, the, some of those doctrines was something that we had to question. We had to really seek. And uh, I must say that even when we started coming uh, into this new community, it, it took us a while to really uh, align ourselves to what, um, what, what God had said in his word, because we were probably so filled with the understanding of tradition and how it works uh, within tradition, it really needed uh, a different mindset to, uh, to um, uh, approach it from the word of God, to be able to dwell into the word of God and, uh, and learn that. Uh, so I think that's, that's one. Uh, also, um, point I would uh, like to bring up is the, the way that, um, uh, you know, in communities, in church communities, there may be times that uh, you're, you, you're under the uh, strong mentorship of spiritual leaders, and that's a good thing. But when they begin to speak into your life, when they begin to dictate or when they begin to ensure that things need to be done in a way that they may see is right is again another uh, a place where we where we, we did need to question uh, when the choices that we made or the uh, the positions that we needed to take when we felt it was uh, according to the way that God had spoken to us and which was right to the word there, there were differences that were um, uh, you know shown to us through our leadership so that was those are two things that that you know come to my mind as this question has come up uh, uh, i'd like to open it up to the others as well to bring in your thoughts and your understanding Uh, yeah, I just wanted to oops, uh, go ahead, Nancy. I'll uh, no, no, Pastor, you could you could share, please. I'll come in after that. Thank you. Okay, okay. Very quickly, um, just wanted to mention that uh, you know, uh, um, since we're all um, uh, work in progress, uh, there's no church which is a perfect church, right? Um, but then again. Um, you know what would happen is uh, to see what is the core thing. What is the core um, doctrine? If there's something which is blatantly off or which is not uh, grounded in scripture, um, then we can very easily, you know, walk away knowing that okay, this is uh, they're not preaching Jesus, they are not preaching the whole gospel, um, and so I can, you know, easily, easily, you know, step away um, and go to a place where. Um, where I can grow, right? Um, but we do it in a way that's um, honorable. We do it in a way that's uh, um, that's uh, uh, honoring God, honoring people, uh, their leadership, and um, uh, and also do it in a very um, uh, I would say you know uh, be dependent on the Holy Spirit. You know, um, just because we want to move away from one place, you know, uh, that we don't make the mistake of just going uh, and um, I mean, uh, being part of another church uh, in a, in a hurry, so we can do it prayerfully. Prayerfully, uh, but so if something is very blatantly off, you know, very clearly off in the teaching, in the life um, uh, of the church, then it's easier. Uh, I just want to read one scripture, you know, um, Colossians one and um, twenty eight. So this is. Uh, Paul's ministry, and he's saying, in you know, him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect um, in Christ Jesus. So, um, you know, this is the uh, ministry of Paul. So he's preaching, he's teaching, and he wants to present his desire, uh, really, is to present every person perfect or mature in Christ. So that's another thing, you know, is um, I am in this body, it's, it's a great community, you know, it could be a great community, having a lot of fun, it's fine. Um, but uh, spiritually, is there something happening that I'm, am I growing? Um, you know, uh, am I, have I discovered the call of God? Um, what about the gifts? Uh, what about the deeper things, you know? Um, so, um, so this is the thing, you know, is the, am I, uh, you know, it, 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 it looks a little bit selfish, but also to see, you know, am I being ministered to uh, as an individual and also as a family, are we being ministered to? Um, uh, uh, what about the call of God? Have I discovered, have I, you know, started growing in uh, uh, in Christ likeness and so on. So um, as much as it's, uh, it's a personal work, um, but also we know that we need to draw from, uh, spiritually draw from uh, um, 
you know, the, the church and the leadership um, and the ministry of the church rather. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, over to you, Nancy. Yes, thank you, Pastor. Uh, I think, uh, Pastor, you've shared the, the last point. That's the point that I wanted to add to the discussion uh, about uh, our growth and about uh, the pursuit of uh, the vision that God has for us. So um, in this case, in Subhajit's question, Subhajit, you're saying the church that uh, one is attending since coming to the Lord. So uh, that shows that no, uh, been part of the church for a very very long time uh, but one question that we must ask ourselves is whether we are growing in God uh, growing in the things of God uh, and whether we are living to fulfill the purposes of God for our lives uh, and if the answer to that question is a no uh, then again you know we we must really prayerfully uh, seek God and uh, uh, and I believe like, you know, God would uh, direct us to be planted in a church where uh, we can grow uh, and we can be a blessing, you know, for the for the church also to to grow and thrive so we can contribute significantly. Um, uh, so that is uh, something to look for. Uh, and uh, if at all, you know, the Lord, uh, after a while being in the church, the Lord leads you in a certain way. Uh, direction which is different from the church uh, you know i'm sure uh, with the blessings of the leadership and um, uh, you know in in a very cordial and uh, cooperative way you can always move forward uh, and uh, you know either the lord leads you to start your own ministry or to to support somebody else in their ministry but uh, to be led by the uh, spirit of god uh, and uh, uh, yeah, to uh, be in a church where you grow. Uh, so I wanted to share this scripture uh, in Psalms. It says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. So, you know, being uh, committed to a local body is very important. Uh, and uh, that also brings about our spiritual um, uh, growth and flourishing. So just wanted to add that point. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jekamar, Pastor Nancy. Uh, anyone else who would like to add in? Uh, I think there was a follow-up question um, by Diana. Um, she said, when we have left one church to join another, what do we answer when someone, us, someone asks us about the shift? Okay, um, I, actually, I, I went through that, uh, me and my wife, we were part of another church, and we were serving as youth advisors. And then, um, and then we came to, you know, um, uh, we, like, we were in a leadership position there. So um, serving in a small way, but we were there anyway. So um, when we came here, uh, when we made our decision to be part of APC and uh, um, because we wanted to grow spiritually and, and so on. So there was a lot of um, a lot of questions actually. Why, you know, uh, why not here? Uh, why not just trust in God? You know, he's the one who anyway speaks and, uh, you know, why can't you do some, why can't you watch some TV programs? Actually, the pastor said that, you know, I know that we don't teach a lot of things, but you watch God TV and then you come and, uh, you know, uh, so, so all those things were there. So we just had to uh, be patient with, um, you know, with the leadership, with all the others, actually more than, I think the leadership, it was easy. We could just tell them, you know, this is, uh, we feel that uh, God leading us. And we also feel that um, this is where God wants us to be planted and so on. But then there were others who felt hurt. We, they felt that we were letting them down. You know, it's like um, you're, you're uprooting yourself from that family and then moving on. It's like, uh, hey, this is deficient. You know, this family is not enough. So uh, for them, uh, it it was uh, you know we just need to re we just needed to reiterate that we uh, we st we still love them that we would be in touch with them, but the you know we need to there's a higher purpose and uh, so initially uh, I don't think every anybody you know, and I don't think everybody understood it, but then over a period of time I remember um, 
uh, one person, uh, he came to church and I think we were ministering in worship and all that. And so we went back and then he texted, I'm, I'm glad that you you moved to, you know, APC, you know, after many years, actually, after, I don't know, about five years or so. So, um, so the thing is to, uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, Diana, so to say that, um, to be patient, to answer and to tell them, speak the truth in love, actually, you know, to be polite, you know, sometimes it can be very difficult when they ask, you know, why, why not, what's wrong with us and so on. They take it very personally. But uh, yeah, uh, that's, that was my experience. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, I, I'd uh, so even we've experienced this, um, and uh, I think we experienced it for very many years, even after uh, we joined APC. Um, uh, and I think, like Pastor Jayakumar said, the the pressure was a lot more from uh, from immediate family and immediate friends, um, because uh, the, the the fact that we were serving there and. Um, uh, that that you know uprooting ourselves from that meant uh, not just um, a lot of young people who were impacted by our going um, but also the family at large um, so i think something that we did was we kept in touch with a lot of people who um, you know who were looking up to us and who were in, we were in, in mentorship programs at at the youth as well as the uh, you know in the Sadi school there. So we ensured that we kept in touch with them even after that to keep that relationship going and uh, not letting them see that it it's it was anything personal against anybody, but it was a calling that we had uh, to see you know uh, uh, more. Um, yeah, so that's been my experience. To anybody else. Uh, else we, we can go on to the next question. Yeah, I, I just like to add um, um, uh, you know, from a point of view of, uh, you know, uh, you, know our you know, coming from a denominational church um, and uh, I've been asked this question, you know, why, uh, why APC, why not some other, uh, you know, born again church. And um, uh, I think that uh, Besides the doctrine and you know a lot of um, insights that uh, that I received uh, personally uh, from you know from the uh, from the teachings, uh, which were which were very very uh, you know um, it made made a lot of changes uh, uh, you know in the way I I I thought about the Bible and uh, about you know about Jesus and uh, and and God uh, you know in its entirety. Uh, so that was definitely one thing. Uh, the other thing I think is also about uh, you know, uh, you know, I think the um, the uh, I think the, the 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 pastoral team which I was very uh, you know impressed with, and um, I think in this in this in this day and age of you know uh, a lot of um, misin misinformation, gossip, uh, there sometimes you know slander, uh, and um, unfortunately uh, you know. Uh, you know, issues with the, you know, uh, you know, pastors and pastoral team having, you know, sort of, you know, fallen. Um, and uh, uh, I mean, this has made, you know, you know, made the news um, uh, internationally as well as within India itself and, and in Bangalore also, unfortunately. So I think the, the, the pastoral team has, you know, uh, is, um, you know, I have, you know, I, my my view is that you know they adhere to a code of conduct, and I, I think that is that is um, uh, you know something that's very important uh, for anyone who attends a church. So uh, uh, that's that's something I just wanted to add. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Okay, um, we move on to. Uh, I think there's another question on the chat uh, by John. It says, what would have God really meant when he sent, said his name as I am that I am in Exodus 3.14? Okay. Um, so uh, in this, in the passage, we see that uh, um, God 
uh, comes to Moses um, at at a at a quite at a miraculous occurrence uh, at when he's at the uh, at, through the burning bush, and um, this is where God calls him into his mission of going back to Egypt to bring out his people from slavery to freedom. Um, so even as uh, I'm just going to open that uh, scripture, but I think in the previous verses, um, God is telling him, telling Abraham, uh, sorry, telling Moses as to what he wants him to do, to go to go back to Pharaoh and uh, uh, show him these particular signs and uh, have have the children freed from there, the children of Israel freed from there. So we see that you know Moses. Uh, uh, has a lot of doubts and he has a lot of questions and he comes with with uh, those doubts and questions to God um, not not being confident of of doing what he will, he is called to do and that's where God says this he says who who shall I say sent me and then God says uh, I say my name is I am who I am and this is a, a um, uh, my uh, just a couple of thoughts is that you know God is showing who He is, the, His nature and His identity through this uh, through this name, and says um, you know this is who I am, this is my nature, and when you will need to go in back to Israel, uh, to to Egypt to get back the Israelites, this is who I am, and it is in the power of who I am that you you do and you're commissioned to do or called to do what you've been asked to do. So it's God really bringing about his identity and his nature. And that's a name that, uh, um, that even Jesus speaks of. Uh, speaks of um, I'm sorry, I don't know the reference. But he also talks uh, of it and brings back this, this name uh, of God. So it is um, to bring about his identity, his nature to Moses so that he goes in that confidence that it is God who is going to be bringing the entire nation out from from slavery um would uh, would someone please uh, add on yeah i just like to uh, thank you jean i just like to add um, you know um the, this this uh, what, what the phrase that god used in exodus 3 um he said um, uh, i am that i am so God says, Moses, go tell the people, I am, has sent me to you. And then the way Jesus used it, um, which Jean referred to, John 8, 58, Jesus tells the Pharisees, you know, the religious leaders, he says, before Abraham was, I am. So Jesus is using the title for himself, but he's really playing on the time element, which really shocks the people. I mean, here they're seeing a man who is about 30 years of age. And he is saying, before Abraham was, he's going back in time about 2,000 years. And he's saying, before Abraham was, I am. So not only is he using the God's title for himself, but he's playing on the time element. So what I want to highlight, John, is uh, this, this title or this the God's title, I am that I am has with it this time element. And basically God is saying, I am. Uh, I God dwells in the eternal now. That means for him, eternity, all of eternity is collapsed into now. It's hard for our minds to comprehend that, but that is God. For God, there is no yesterday, no tomorrow. He is in the eternal now. And all of eternity, eternity past and eternity to come for God is now i mean that's how big he is so when he says i am that i am god is saying i dwell out of time i dwell outside of time and all of time is collapsed into an instant for god which is now he dwells in the now and that's why you know he uses language like this you know i am alpha i'm omega i am the beginning and the end He's trying to communicate to us, people who live in time, that he dwells outside of time. And for him, all of time is in the now. So I just uh, like to throw that in. Um, Pastor, does it also um, refer to um, God being the self-existent one in 
uh, or there's a yeah, point so, to that. Um, yeah, so we, you know, when we, when we would say he is the eternal self-existent one, you know, that's another way to put it, the eternal self-existent one. He is not dependent on anybody else for his existence. Yeah, good. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, thanks, Master. Thank you, thank you, yeah, I hope that answered uh, your question, Don. Uh, you think there's another question that's uh, there on the chat? Um, it's by Ruth. Uh, she's asked to shed light on First Corinthians seven twenty, which says each one uh, should remain in the situation he was in when he was called. Okay. Um, I'd like to open this out to Pastor to kindly answer this. All right, thanks. Okay, so First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter seven, uh, as we understand, and as we all know, uh, Paul is coming to address the issue of marriage. So, you know, First Corinthians, Paul is addressing different issues. Uh, from the church in Corinth, and he's going through, you know, um, one uh, going addressing them one after the other, and in chapter seven, he's addressing this whole issue of marriage, and so he starts talking about marriage, and then, you know, and, and I'm sure that these are questions the church have uh, sent to Paul, you know, through the messengers who came from Corinth, so Paul is responding to that. So part of that question was, you know, what if uh, one of the people in the marriage is a believer and the other one is not and so paul writes about that you know and then this is basically in verses 12 13 14 and 15 so he's come down to that that aspect uh, where he says you know okay you know uh, uh, if there is a, a believer and an unbeliever and the unbeliever departs uh, then okay you know the the marriage can be absolved because the unbeliever has departed that the wife is free, but if the unbeliever is willing to stay with the believer, then continue that way, right? So he's kind of gone through it. And then suddenly he takes a little side excursion, like many of us preachers do, <laughs> verse 17 to 24. He goes on a little side excursion before he comes back to the subject of marriage. And this, this side excursion is, is, is kind of connected to what he has just finished saying, which is, look, what has he finished saying? If there's a believer and unbeliever, and the unbeliever is willing to stay with the believer, then don't depart. You stay in that. You know, verse 10 is a wife is not to depart from a husband, you stay there. You stay in that, even if the unbeliever the, uh, person uh, is an unbeliever, but he's willing to stay. He's willing to continue the marriage. You stay in that marriage, right? Then he goes on a side excursion and says, okay, let's extrapolate this to all other situations in life. And so he extrapolates that. What does he say? He addresses whether you're circumcised or uncircumcised. That's verses 17 to 19. Then he addresses your social standing, which is, are you slave or free? Which is verses 20 to 23. And then he concludes in verse 24 remain and let everyone remain in the state which is called. That means he's saying, look, once you become a believer, God is not asking you to change where you are. So you're a believer who's married to an unbeliever, remain there if you are, if the unbeliever's unbelieving spouse is, you know, is happy and willing to continue the marriage. Secondly, if you were a circumcised person, you were a Jew or you were an uncircumcised, you were a Gentile, doesn't matter. You don't have to change that uh, that part of you, you know. You, and this, of course, has to do with the religious bringing. You were a Jew or a Gentile. You don't have to, you know, worry about that. That's just a cultural thing or a social thing. Were you a slave or a, a free person? Doesn't matter. You can continue on that. And of course, he puts in a little thing saying that if you are a slave, try to become free because obviously being free is better than being a slave. Uh, so. Uh, that's verse 21, you know, if you can be made free, then hey, go for it, you know, to be free, because obviously being free is better than being a slave. But the main, the essence of what he's saying there in verses 17 to 24 is, you know, you belong to God. Regardless of where you are in life, 
when you got saved. So if you were married to an unbeliever, you got saved. You remain there because you belong to God. You may have been a Jew or a Gentile. Don't try to change that. You belong to God. You are a slave or a free. You belong to God. Of course, if you're a slave, it's good to become free. Fine. But what he is saying is, verse 22, whoever you are, you belong to God. And in God, you are free. He says, you are bought at a price. And therefore, he says, concludes in verse 24, let each one remain with God in the state which he was called. That means wherever you are called, remain there, right? Don't, don't think that you need to change that. So that is the essence of what he is saying. Now, how does that apply to us today, right? It means that, you know, uh, wherever God has called us, you know, whatever culture we belong to, whatever you know, country, political, I mean, whatever our background is, we belong to God and we need to, you know, uh, live out of who we are in God, not worry about the immediate thing, right? So then he gets back afterwards, 25 onwards, he gets back into, you know, marriage and those kinds of things. So that's the, uh, you know, the essence of what Paul is saying. Now, uh, if you have a specific question, like on its application, Rose, you know, you could bring it up because, that's the issue many people struggle with. Okay, how do I apply that in life to my everyday situation? So if you have a question on that, you can bring it up and we can address it. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. That's it for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Rose. Um, there's one more question uh, as a follow-up of the um, the if. Ephesians, uh, the question, Ephesians, I'll, I'll just uh, bring this up. I don't know if you have time uh, to discuss this, but uh, the question of, the question of predestination as discussed appears to me that some people will be missing out in the inheritance as mentioned in Ephesians 4 because they are unbelievers or have not or cannot accept Jesus. And we know that God created all of us and does want us to be saved. In this sense, what should be our role as believers to help save our brothers who might miss out um, miss out on the inheritance? Um, so I think this is a, this is again a question of predestination and free will. Um, the the fact that um, you know God has given each of us uh, as His creation to choose. We have the free will to choose um, and make choices, as against the, um, the the predestination that you know God has chosen some to have uh, to be in His kingdom to have the inheritance. Um, yeah, I, I, Pastor, I will need to ask you to help with this too again. Yeah, thanks, Jean. Uh, I think you know. Let's open it up to others. Um... Any of the other faculty you want to share? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Just uh, some insights. Uh, um, uh, like I'm reminded of scriptures like uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Um, then uh, of uh, like Second Peter 3, um, verse 9 that you know it's it's not it's god's will that none should perish so you know while uh, the bible in in this uh, passage talks about predestination the uh, same word of god in uh, several other places talks about the fact that uh, uh, what jesus has done on the cross uh, it's uh, the that work is available for for everybody and you know we see uh, scriptures that say that whosoever believes uh, you know whosoever calls upon the lord shall be saved so um, there is uh, the free will of man uh, and man's choice to to accept uh, what the lord jesus has done uh, as well uh, now your one part of the question um, uh, uh, isaac 
uh, yes, is, uh, you know, what should we do to help our brothers and sisters? Uh, you know, Romans 10, of, uh, Romans 10, I think it's words, verse 14, where it says, uh, how then shall, uh, okay, I'll just go to that and I'll read it for us. Yeah, uh, it says, how then shall they call on him in whom uh, they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So, uh, you know, it talks about uh, taking the word, taking the word of God. Um, sorry. Your mic. Uh, sorry, Pastor. Yes. Uh, so it talks about um, us taking the word out and preaching it uh, to people. Uh, and just as the Lord Jesus uh, commanded us, uh, just as he gave us the great commission, uh, I think the way uh, uh, the way people can respond is uh, when we share the message, we share the message of what has uh, been made available to us through the uh, sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. So I just wanted to add uh, these thoughts. Uh, thank you. thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, go ahead, Jean. We, we could wrap sorry. up. Uh, so, yeah. so, sorry, I lost my connection. I, yeah, I think we're at eight fifty. Uh, thank you. Thank you for all who responded. Uh, thank you for those questions. I think there, that I've lost my chat, so I don't know if there's any other question that has been that has come as a result uh, at the end. Um, uh, um, Pastor Nancy, may I just request if you could just look up the chat to see if there is anything and uh, just uh, uh, yes, right? Yeah, we'll, should we pick it up next week? Uh, yes, you, yes, yes, Pastor. Why don't you yes. wrap up and? You can close yeah. in prayer and we'll sure. take up Abraham's question next week, Abraham, if it's okay. Sure. Can, can we just close with a word of prayer? Father God, we thank you once again, Lord, for this time. Lord, where you continue to speak to us. Thank you, Father, for the clarity that you give us through just looking into your word and the way that we can apply it, Lord, into our lives. Father, as we go through our day, we pray that your spirit, Lord, continues your, your, uh, his work in us, praying, Lord, that uh, we will uh, do as we are called, Lord. Thank you once again. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you, connecting. Team. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. See you all at class. Thank you. <laughs>